Another unlabeled, unknown, completely unmarked, no maker's mark to label guitar. Um, I look for these uh, reasonable uh, spruce top, mahogany back and sides, um, with a setup, plays great. Good, good guitar. A lot better than some of the uh, branded guitars, um, you know, sold. Uh, places like Target and Walmart. Um, yeah, so anyway, it's not a video about that. I noticed that uh, in the guitar community on YouTube, a lot of people have taken the time to do a video about two recent issues that came up. I normally don't get involved, but I thought I would uh, um, dispel a few thoughts on, uh, on both topics. The first one is the demise of Gibson. Uh, a lot of people have made videos about this. And the fact that they may uh, either completely dissolve or become a lesser company with lesser production in order to compete in today's marketplace. Um, and some of the videos I'm watching are sorrowful, full of nostalgia, um, talking about the great instruments of yore and how such a mighty company has fallen. Um, and how now they're going to dilute their stock and their quality by joining in the the uh, thousands of companies that um, import stuff from Asia. Uh, and then you have others that you know they yeah they're almost they're almost happy to see the giant fall. They deserve it. They're, the quality's fallen. Uh, Epiphones are better. Uh, they don't make, make instruments like they used to. They they didn't take care of their customers, they lost touch with people, all that sort of stuff. They, you read what you sow kind of thing. I'm somewhere in the middle. <laughs> Frankly, I don't really care that much. Well, you say to me, you don't care why you're making a video about it. Well, you know, there's been a lot of great makers uh, and companies uh, that have gone the way that Gibson might be going. Uh, it's just, It's just part of the industry and even even the, uh, the, the three, four um, revered companies that have an almost religious appropriation in the industry are, are just as liable at some point to fall, um, you know, uh, or to change their, their mode of operation and become a lesser company. You see it quite often. So I really, I really don't care that much. Um, I've had Gibsons, I don't think I currently own one. Um, I don't have a religious sense of subservience to them. Um, I think they make good guitars in the past and I think they probably still do. Um, and I think, yeah, that's probably true that their production standards have fallen. Um, but I, it doesn't really bother me to lose them from the marketplace if they disappear. If they do go away or they do, uh, um, liquidate, then the uh, classic Gibsons will go up in value and there'll be a, you know, a, a bustling trade uh, on their name um, for older instruments or, or certain years uh, and models, which happens to a lot of companies. Um, and uh, you know, I, I'm far more um, sorrowful and mournful about companies like Tacoma who are bullied out of existence by uh, companies like Fender uh, rather than a company like Gibson that's you know basically run aground because of their own uh, you know uh, business practices so I'm not I don't really think it's that big of an issue um, if they disappear if they become um, lesser guitars because they change their um, modes of production. I think they're joining a lot of other brands. I think Fender's gone that way, to be honest with you, particularly in their acoustic guitars. Um, there are still some nice uh, uh, models like the, the or series like the Paramount series, um, but a lot of their, their sort of entry level student quality guitars have gone downhill. Um, and the last few I've had haven't even been good enough for me to show on this channel as part of my uh, recommendations, my Guitar Secrets series. 
just not good enough. I mean, uh, they don't they don't stack up to some of the other guitars that I, of lesser uh, brands or no brands that I've been showing. Um, and you know, I think a lot of um, uh, great once great makers uh, um, dilute their uh, their production and, and are now just so so. Um, I think Fender's guilty of it. I think Martin's guilty of it. I think Washburn's guilty of it. I think Guild is guilty of it. Gretsch. Um, you know, they, they all make good guitars. They've all made excellent guitars in the past. But they're all guilty of, um, if, if there should be guilt associated with such a thing, they've all gone into the import market and put out stuff of lesser quality. Uh, either under their parent name or under some, some subsidiary. Now, Gibson has lots of um, subsidiary uh, brands that are not that great. Uh, they're still made by Gibson. So I'm really, I'm not mournful, but I'm not scathing about it. I think it's just part of the industry. Okay, they're a big, iconic uh, company. They made some iconic guitars. Uh, things change, and the the industry will shift, and and you know have different tides. I just think that's just the nature of things. And if they don't make it, they don't make it. Um, you know, I don't feel any sense of loyalty or nostalgia for them. The other the other uh, <laughs> big announcement, which is interesting, that um, people have made videos about. There's a smattering of videos uh, that are popping up is the fact that Chapman guitars, uh, who are sort of a self-stylized, uh, for the people, um, electric guitar, I think they were made in China, now they're made in Korea, um, sort of, um, you know, a production team of, of, of younger guys that uh, are very popular on the internet and have some affiliations with Andertons and put out lots of videos and, you know, sort of by proxy, um, design guitars and have slowly got a foothold uh, and are making waves in the industry and of course making um, negative waves as well. I see a lot of reactionary videos about how their guitars aren't very good and they're overpriced and uh, either they don't deserve it and all this stuff. Um, you know, so they've, they've made some inroads uh, over the last few years. They've, they've gone from um, you know, sort of limited um, production methods to a more commercial, uh, a full range of guitars, different um, price points and all that. So this, they've become, you know, a proper guitar company, if you want to call it that. But uh, the recent news is that they're now affiliated with Guitar Center and they're going to be um, sold through there. And of course, there are lots of videos saying, that's great, good luck to them, they deserve it, they've worked hard, um, you should be happy for them. Uh, anyone who is going to put their all their time and endeavor into something, if they're offered a better means of dis distribution, are going to take it. Uh, and then there are other people saying they sold out, they're going to be next year's Schecter. <laughs> it's what a video is all about, Tone King. Um, they're going to be uh, devalued. Um, you know, and, and sort of almost um, um, hectoring the company, or, and particularly the company uh, owner, for selling out. Um, what's my opinion on this point? Well, first of all, um, I don't have a, a, a strong opinion either way. I'm still waiting to play a Chapman guitar. Um, I haven't actually come across one yet. And the I don't do retail. I don't shop at retail shops. I occasionally stop in. To the retail shops, and I just haven't seen anyone locally selling them. I've seen lots of videos on them. They look nice. Um, I actually think the old, the older ones, um, you know, the earlier productions, especially the finishes, I actually like the look of them. I thought they had a bit more um, individuality. Uh, now, now they look. They're nice. I mean, what they're doing now, they, they look really. The finishes look really nice, and they look like you know, reasonably made guitars, but it's sort of starting to blend in with other um, with other companies a bit. And I suppose you could always say that because their 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 models are based on, you know, famous uh, guitars. 
But I have a bit no ill will. I mean, these are chaps from my home country. They've carved a niche for themselves. If they want to sell out, if they want better distribution, great stuff. Go for it. Um, if they wanted to stay sort of independent and uh, keep their keep their niche, uh, that'd be great too. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not going to criticize them either way. It will devalue their instrument. I mean, obviously, these are instruments being sold in the midpoint range. Um, I often see them, you know, around a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars. And a lot of people are saying for a Korean guitar that's overpriced. Yeah, possibly. There are a lot of similarly made guitars that are a lot cheaper coming out of Korea, but there are other guitar companies as well that seem a little bit high. Um, selling or being mass mass distributed at Guitar Center is going to drive down their prices. Guitar Center, I used to work for two uh, big guitar makers for a number of years. Um, we did most of our business with Guitar Center and Musician's Friend and they will drive down the price. They'll buy massive amounts. They'll buy whole production lines from them uh, and they will sell them at pennies, you know, they'll sell them, you know, twenty dollars above cost just to move them. That's how Guitar Center operates. That's why no one can compete with them. They operate at low margins, they buy high volume and sell at low margins. Um, if the, if something's if one of these Chapman guitars is on sale, let's say for eleven hundred through Toman or somewhere else, um, Guitar Center will sell that kind of guitar uh, for 900 to start, but it'll be 750, 650 before you know it. And it will also uh, um, put a lot of their guitars into the used market uh, as well. Uh, when Schecter went big, you started seeing them crop up. I've had them um, show up on my bench. Um, you know, when, when guitar companies uh, get better distribution, it always drives down the price and it creates a used market. Um, and I'm sure that the guys at Chapman know this. I mean, I mean, they're affiliated with Anderton's, a big, uh, a big um, uh, retail seller in, in the UK. They know the game. They know what will happen. I think they just they just made a choice that um, it's worth it. Um, if they want to be viable, if they want to be um, a competitor at that level, they need to be distributed uh, in a way that helps them compete. And of course, there's no better distribution in the guitar world than Guitar Center. So there are, uh, you know, pluses and, and, and minuses on this. I wish them well. I hope they do well. Uh, and when I get one of these guitars and play it, I'll give you, you my opinion on it. I'm certainly not going to give you my opinion based on someone playing it in front of a camera on YouTube, which seems to be um, in vogue right now. I just saw Corey Murrow's video where he went to Tillman's and played some of them. He was relatively disappointed and thought they were overpriced. Fair enough, but I'm not going to promote that point of view until I play one myself. And I will at some point. Um, and you know, if one ever comes up that I feel is a good deal or worthwhile or affordable, being that they're a British company, um, that I possibly might own one in the future. I'm not, I'm not closing the door, I'm not ruling it out. At the same time, I'm not chasing any down. Um, I'll wait till then, <laughs> half the price, uh, uh, after a few years of being distributed at Guitar Center. Uh, but I wish him well. Uh, so those are the two issues I just wanted to talk about. I know it's sort of a, a middle of the road, rather non-carish path, but that's really my my gospel, isn't it? I don't worship brands. I don't. Um, I don't. I'm not, I don't subscribe to logo subservience and, and loyalty. It just doesn't exist in my world. Um, so of course you can expect that I'm going to take that approach with these big news situations in the guitar world. Anyway, I'll stop rabbiting on, and I'll talk to you about guitars or ukuleles or maybe some other instrument next time. See ya.